It's the most wonderful time of the year. The lights are up, the displays are lit. Santa's winking. And the trees are twinkling. So join us as we help you get into the holiday spirit in this very different holiday season from right here in downtown Fort Wayne. Welcome to a special presentation from Wayne 15 and the Downtown Improvement District, Merry and Bright, a history of the Night of Lights presented by PNC Bank. Now from downtown Fort Wayne, here's Wayne 15's Dirk Rowley and Tara Brantley. The Night of Lights is one of Fort Wayne's favorite holiday traditions, and while the COVID-19 pandemic has changed a lot this year, the sights and sounds of this downtown classic continue to endure. All of the lighting displays you know and love are up and lit, and they'll stay lit throughout the new year. Now, since we can't gather together as a large group to celebrate the lightings, we'll do our very best to show you how it all came to be, starting way back with the Christmas displays at the Wolf and Dessauer department store. Fort Wayne's Wolf and Death Sour was the collaboration of city native Sam Wolf and Pennsylvania transplant Myron Dessauer. Their dry goods store opened in the spring of 1896 with two key principles, customer satisfaction and saturation advertising. 13 employees on South Calhoun Street quickly outgrew the space and moved to the space that is now the PNC Bank building. That lasted fewer than 10 years, and in 1917, the store moved into its iconic building at Calhoun and Washington, the site of the current i and building, where it would stay until 1959, when it downsized to what is now Citizen Square. But that six-story white building was where W&D thrived, in no small part due to a key hire. In 1917, Wolf and Dessauer brought on Irving Bud Latz. He was described as a natural-born retailer who instinctively knew if an item would sell. Latz soon bought out Wolf and Dessauer and began to innovate constantly. With a return policy that seems impossible, customers could return any item at any time, no questions asked. We had a gentleman return something that had actually come from Fishman's, which was another high-end store. Um, but he was quite distraught in returning it and we just accepted the return and then later dealt with taking it down to Fishman's for the credit. I was told that there was a guy who bought a bicycle and uh, he said, would you please help me load this uh, in my car? And one of the managers said, sure, we'll help you load it in the car. Turned out he didn't actually buy it. <laughs> The manager helped him load a stolen bike in his car. The store carried everything, bringing the world to Fort Wayne. Customers dressed up to shop. From the soda fountain on the street level to the high-end tea room on the sixth floor, everything was done wholeheartedly for the pleasure of the customer. Bud Latz had put together a diverse team that was constantly topping itself. Latz drew up the iconic light displays and his team made it happen. Christmas at Wolf and Death's Hour still echoes in downtown Fort Wayne. Wayne 15's Brianna Brownlee has more. There's something special about a, the Night of Lights for the people in the area. It's a tradition dating back to the late 1930s. Folks that are older now remember to go see this when they were little kids, and they're probably, or could be in their 70s or 80s now. Bringing together young and old to kick off the holiday season. So as a little girl, you look at the lights and it's like, wow, that's a big Santa, you know, and as an adult, the tradition really starts to mean more as you spend it with your family. Yay! The legacy originated from the department store Wolf and Dussauer. In, in the early part of the 20th century was a very popular place at Christmas time. They had these very intricate and, and attractive window displays. People came from all over to just see the window displays. Before the Night of Lights, Wolf and Dessauer was the key factor of making Christmas in Fort Wayne magical. This was a major event in uh, this community and it was really probably a lot like what you'd have found in New York City at Macy's Department Store. Around 1940, the company started what will become one of Fort Wayne's greatest traditions. Um, the window displays that they put out, uh, visits with Santa Claus and Wee Willie Wand, all of that was part of our history from the 30s through the early 70s. 
The Merry Christmas Wreath was one of the original displays from the Wolf and Death Sour era and now hangs high on the Indiana Michigan Power Building. It, it's, it's very neat and it's neat that it could be on a building that is the same site where Wolf and Death Sour was. And the other original display was the ever so famous Santa and his reindeer that was on the south side of the WND building. And it was done out of plywood. And in fact, at that time, it was the largest display in the country. In the 60s, tragedy struck as Wolf and Death Sire was burnt down, causing the Christmas wreath and Santa and his reindeer to be tucked away in storage for years. And with more shopping happening in the suburbs opposed to downtown, the Christmas tree wasn't lit for at least 20 years. The display itself ended up being stored and kind of lost. And they did not take the Santa or the wreath with them, and they were in storage for a long time. And when the, uh, the reindeer was, was uh, rediscovered and Santa was rediscovered and put on the PNC Bank Building in 1979, at that point, there were a lot of people who remembered going to Wolf and Death Hour as kids. In the early 2000s, a change came. Instead of lighting the displays separately, companies came together and created an event called the Night of Lights. We have the Downtown Improvement District that kind of brought it all together, and now it's got its own name. It's called the Night of Lights. Starting with Santa and his reindeer. Santa and his reindeer have been part of our community since 1940. Looking out and seeing the sea of people that are out there that come downtown now every year is just an amazing feeling. The INM Merry Christmas wreath. It's just an amazing, it's an amazing thing. It's, it's um, 32 feet wide, it weighs three and a half tons, it has 8,000 lights, half those are red, and then you have some, a lot of green and, and a lot of white on there. And for the 2019 holiday season, Flagstar not only replaced its LED display with two artificial trees, but a nostalgic character returned. We Willy Wand. I remember visiting Santa Claus and I remember um, the Wee Willy Wand and all of the, the magic that took place in downtown Fort Wayne. And bringing back Wee Willy Wand seems the one element of those early days uh, of Wolf and Death Hour that was missing. From the displays that light up downtown. When it lights up, you know, we're really rekindling a lot of old memories and we're creating a lot of new. To the memorable moments. And there's a lot of different things that have happened under this display. There have been a number of marriage proposals. It's safe to say that to this day, the Night of Lights is a family tradition that remains strong. Yeah, so this has been a family tradition for us for a long time, and we just absolutely love it. I think it was cool. We started when he was about two, so it's our little special tradition. And will continue to grow. It has grown over a number of years because it's, it's come, become not just uh, a Fort Wayne event, but it's a Northeast Indiana event, Northwest Ohio event, Southern Michigan event. So it is a large attraction and everybody wants to be transported back to that time when they were a kid. While the old Wolf and Death Hour is long gone, those holiday displays prevail due to a lot of work behind the scenes throughout downtown. With displays no longer in just one spot, the Night of Lights celebrates lightings throughout downtown with lightings timed throughout the evening. Here's a look at how all of those displays, both new and old, are assembled and hung with care. Every year, thousands of us can't wait to see the iconic Santa and his reindeer light up the side of the PNC Bank building. Tonight, we introduce you to some of the special elves who help Santa come to town. The Magic of Christmas. In Fort Wayne, is found with the blink of a wink. It's amazing through all the weather that we've been through, the rain and the sleet and the wind, and still thousands of people show up. Dashing through that snow and into the hearts of young and old is good old Saint Nick. But before he can deck the wall, Santa has a few helpers who make the miracle on Main Street happen. It's a lot of fun. Greg Finner is one of those elves. He's been assembling the dazzling display for almost 20 years. Pull it out of the trailer piece by piece, uh, and then we, uh, we temporarily hook it up to a little electric panel, 
uh, check all the bulbs. Each and every LED. 24,717. But who's counting? Yay! Sam Doherty is the rigging coordinator, gathering the guys to run the cranes and make sure hitching up the reindeer goes off without a hitch. We try to keep uh, like a fairly young group of guys in. Uh, so that obviously this thing continues to go so that uh, as Greg and I get older there's always uh, there's fresh bodies if you will to uh, to come down and help pull things together. Finding the help is never hard to do. Everybody wants to be involved everybody's always eager to help everybody's eager to learn uh, because it's just a huge thing for our community you know and this is one thing that always pulls us together. With the ripple of his whip and a twinkle in his eye Santa keeps downtown Fort Wayne merry and bright year after year. The weather plays a big role in how fast they can assemble Santa, but it's usually a couple of days. Hey, Chris Darby coming to you from outside the Indiana, Michigan Power Building. The giant wreath is lit behind me and Kim from Indiana, Michigan Power joining us. What's it like to see the lights all up for the season? It, it's very exciting. We're so proud to be able to bring this display to the community. Talk about the history. This means a lot to the community. It's been around, we said, like a half a century at this point. When the um, community saw the Santa and reindeer go up on the PNC building years earlier, there was a lot of excitement about that. And when the opportunity came to be able to display the other large decoration that had been part of Wolf and Death's Hour, INM was really uh, glad to bring that downtown, put it on the building. But it's also just something kind of cool to look at. Let's run through some of the fun facts, I guess, about the size of this and what's all involved in it. The wreath is 32 feet in diameter, weighs three and a half tons, and has 8,500 lights. There are 3,975 red lights, 3,375 green lights, and 1,150 white bulbs. That's an awesome sight to see in downtown Fort Wayne. As we said, you want to come down. This is a great photo opportunity as long as you do it safe with your family. What do you hope families get to experience when they come down here and see this? Oh, you know, INM is really very proud to be able to uh, be the caretaker for this treasured icon. And we're really excited about being able to help continue the tradition of families coming downtown, enjoying all the holiday decorations. Wonderful. Thanks for being here. Thank you very much. That's Kim from Indiana, Michigan Power, and I'm Chris Darby reporting from downtown Fort Wayne. What a thrill working on those iconic displays. Still to come, Wayne 15's Pat Hoffman introduces you to the daughter of Phil Steigerwald, who is better known as the Wolf and Death Hour Santa. She shares fond memories of her father, who left a lasting impression on the youth of Fort Wayne. But first, here's a look at some of the other lighting displays downtown. Santa's workshop display is hard to miss. Located at the Community Center on Main Street, the animated display features an elf-powered toy factory with an endless conveyor loading gifts into Santa's sleigh. And the History Center, home to the Festival of Gingerbread, is in the 1893 City Hall building and features a turret lit up with special holiday colors. The way things are changing is personal. And while everyone's financial needs are different, we're working to help with each one. So your small business stays open, your community thrives, and you're ready for what's next. Because we've always done what's right. So whether you're out with a friend, thinking about your business, or spending lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of time with the kids, we're here. It's how we're making a difference now and for the future. PNC Bank. Welcome back to Merry and Bright, a history of the Night of Lights, presented by PNC Bank. Here's Wayne 15's Pat Hoffman. We've shown you where the displays come from, but for so many in Fort Wayne, their earliest Christmas memory is a snapshot, a moment frozen in time, but still vivid years later, thanks to an iconic man with a booming, gentle voice. Fort Wayne puts a twinkle in my eye. I love coming here on Christmas Eve, for a generation of kids that grew up in Fort Wayne from the mid 50s to the early 70s, getting a picture on Santa's lap at Wolf and Death Hour was a must have. 
When I was a kid back in the early 60s, it was magic. That block where Wolf and Death Hour was, was magic. It was a destination. People would drive, you know, from all over to come to see the magic windows, to come see Santa Claus. And right in the middle of all the action was the quintessential Santa Claus, Phil Steigerwald. That's a picture of him with the four of us. That's me and the lovely coach here. As one of Santa's four kids, Beth Walker had a front row seat to all the fun. The story was that he was one of Santa's special helpers. You know, that you might see lots of Santas in other places, but the special helpers had a phone with a direct line to the North Pole, but it was our secret. He was like the Santa Claus. Um, there were other Santa Claus, but it wasn't like seeing the you know, uh, the, the real Santa Claus, Phil Steigerwald, he was the man. I think we knew it was something special at the time. You know, what we learned as we grew into adulthood, not everybody has the opportunity to have a parent, you know, who's no longer living be remembered so fondly. There are times when I will recognize a moment where it's very appropriate and almost funny, but yet heartwarming to say to somebody, well, I'm Santa Claus's daughter. And if you, just, if you just hit them with that line and they look at you, you know, and then I say, but wait. <laughs> and so then when I, and then I tell them who dad was, and they're like, oh, he was the real Santa, you know. To me, it was just always dad, you know, there with the suit on. But um, I knew he was making magic for other people. And I want you to remember this, is at Christmas, there would be absolutely no peeking. And the no peeking message still holds true today. And of course, Santa needs his elves. Now let's go to Chris Darby, who introduces you to a man who helped rescue some of the Wolf and Dessauer elves. Sometime in the next week or two, this bay window at a house at Watkins and Main, just west of downtown Fort Wayne, will be transformed, giving passerbys a chance to feel what it must have felt like looking in the windows of Wolf and Dessauer decades ago. Everybody loves seeing the WND elves again. Once they have power connected, three animatronic elves have their own power to take people back in time. It's kind of kind of one of those things we have a lot of people that come uh, every year and want to look at them and talk about them and then uh, it seems like every year there's new folks as well. Looking for other Christmas decorations, Chris Shadow came across the old elves at an auction about 10 years ago. He knew they needed a lot of work. They were all in disarray, you know, broken up, uh, the motors didn't work in them, uh, the clothes were just almost non-existent, and uh, I, I literally almost paid nothing for them. Uh, don't, kind of don't even know why I grabbed them. Maybe we can chalk that up to some Christmas magic from years past. The elves helping light up the faces of children along downtown streets, peering into the Wolf and Dessauer windows. With the prodding of a neighbor and some TLC, the elves got new life about a mile and a half and a half century away from their old home. It was just the perfect window, the big bay window and uh, the, the pretty gingerbread house, you know, on Main Street. Reporting from Main Street, Chris Darby, Wayne 15 News. Do you know why there is a Christmas tree on top of the pedestrian walkway at Calhoun and Wayne? It dates back to the 1960s when a tree was placed on top of an arch. Organizers joked it was known as the world's largest Christmas tree stand. Now here's a look at some more of those sights and sounds in downtown. One of the newest additions to the Night of Lights, the Ash Skyline Garage, features a color-changing holiday display located at the base of the Ash Skyline Plaza. While the Christ Child Festival's lighted nativity is tucked away on the Ross Building at the corner of Main and Maiden Lane. Happy Holidays! I'm Toby Thomas, President of Indiana Michigan Power. The Night of Lights is a great Fort Wayne holiday tradition and it's very special for i &M. Many decades ago, families visited downtown Fort Wayne to see the Merry Christmas wreath and other downtown decorations. It's amazing that children, grandchildren, and great-grandchildren of some of those families visit downtown today to see the very same wreath at the very same location. INM is pleased to be able to restore and bring it back to display at Indiana Michigan Power Center 
where it's been a downtown icon for the past 33 years. This year, we missed the crowds walking down Calhoun Street to view the wreath and enjoy hot chocolate. But we are glad that the wreath joins other traditional displays to shine the holiday spirit across downtown for another year. When you come downtown to see the lights, please protect yourself and others by practicing physical distancing and wearing face coverings. We at i &M hope you and your families have a joyous, peaceful, and safe season. Happy holidays. The way things are changing is personal. And while everyone's financial needs are different, we're working to help with each one. So your small business stays open, your community thrives, and you're ready for what's next. Because we've always done what's right. So whether you're out with a friend, thinking about your business, or spending lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of time with the kids, we're here. It's how we're making a difference now and for the future. PNC Bank. Merry and Bright, a history of the Night of Lights, presented by PNC Bank, continues. Hey, and now we're down here by the Aunt Millie's Bakery, home of the Northern Lights display during the holidays. And joining me to talk a little bit about it is Bomb Pop from Aunt Millie's. Very exciting to see the lights on this year. What's it like for Aunt Millie's to be a part of this Night of Lights tradition here in Fort Wayne? It's a real pleasure for us. And uh, we have done this for probably 15 years. And this display is such a unique kind of display. What do kind of describe it? How big is this? How many bulbs are involved? Believe it or not, it's 63,000 bulbs. 63,000 takes up only 15 amps, which is equivalent to, oh, probably about two hair dryers. The height is 41 feet and the length is 226 feet. Every year up to this year, it's just the crowds, the crowds just seem to grow, right? And we get so many great comments and people drive by and they're with their families and they've just got lots of, just lots of great joy from it. And it's, it's a blessing to us. Being this unusual year and doing things a little different this year, how important is it to continue traditions like this for our community? I think it's more important than ever. You know, in the holidays and, and normalcy and family, we don't have to give that up and we're not going to. And, and we want to be part of the community for a long time. We've been here believe it or not, for 119 years, and we want to be here for a lot longer. So it's just a pleasure, I mean, to see all these wonderful displays to be part of it. Sign out down here at the Aunt Millie's Bakery on Pearl Street. Chris Darby, Win 15 News. We're all doing our best to adapt to a new reality in 2020, but we're looking to a merry and bright future. It's important we take the time to recognize people are facing a crisis right now, people in our own backyard, and you can help them with a few clicks of a button. Right now on the United Way of Allen County's website, you can find a COVID response section. It gives you ways to immediately give and volunteer. If you're not in Allen County, other United Ways have similar funds. Two things remain the same during the holiday season, the sights and sounds, and it being the season for giving. We must remember it's important to continue to think of and help others this time of year. Here inside the beautiful Embassy Theater on West Jefferson Boulevard, an annual tradition will still take place. I'm talking about the Embassy's Festival of Trees. This is the 36th year for the event. The Embassy has strict safety guidelines it's following because of the pandemic. Masks are required and guests must practice social distancing. So we're capping capacity at 100, which means that we're not going to have stage performances, which we're really sad about. Everything will be on the first floor only. Santa won't be here in person, but he will offer virtual visits instead. We are also adding days to the end of the event, so that's kind of big. So we were supposed to end on December 2nd, now we're taking it through the 6th. We have one-way traffic patterns this year. If you can't make it out in person to ooh and ah, you can buy a virtual ticket. They're on sale now. The online tour will be available for viewing December 3rd through January 1st. As for one of the more tastier festivals, don't forget about gingerbread. Since 1985, the Festival of Gingerbread has become one of Fort Wayne's most cherished holiday traditions and one of downtown's most popular events. Each year, local artists put their talents to the test and bake wonderful creations that are set up in the historic Shields Room at the History Center on Berry Street. This year's display will also follow COVID-19 safety precautions. It runs Friday, November 27th through Sunday, December 13th. 
To accommodate as many people as possible, the History Center is launching its first ever virtual gingerbread tour that you can buy through their website. For dates, times, and admission costs, go to wayne.com. We're back with more Merry and Bright, a history of Night of Lights, when we come back. In a normal year, the Fort Wayne Tin Caps and Parkview Field put on a holiday-themed fireworks display that's a real crowd pleaser. And the annual ringing of the bells fills the city of churches with the sounds of beautiful church bells from all across downtown Fort Wayne. The way things are changing is personal. And while everyone's financial needs are different, we're working to help with each one. So your small business stays open, your community thrives, and you're ready for what's next. Because we've always done what's right. So whether you're out with a friend, thinking about your business, or spending lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of time with the kids, we're here. It's how we're making a difference now and for the future. PNC Bank. It's the most wonderful time of the year again. And while this year is different, downtown Fort Wayne invites you to continue your traditions and make memories safely. So here are a few reminders. There won't be any live lightings on Thanksgiving Eve this year. The holiday displays are lit now and will be up all season long for you to enjoy. We encourage you to come downtown as a family and do it safely. Wear a mask, be sure to social distance when you visit. From all of us downtown, have a safe and happy holiday. Hey, this is Dustin with Tricor. We are super excited to be part sponsors of the Merry and Bright Season of Lights here in Fort Wayne, Indiana. There's going to be some amazing lights downtown. Come out, check them out all season long. I'm Justin with Tricor Logic. Happy holidays. We hope that everybody can enjoy the safe social distancing events that are downtown in Fort Wayne, Indiana. If you need more information, visit HolidayFestDowntown.com. And Tricor Logic is always happy to support this in downtown Fort Wayne. Definitely be sure to come downtown. There's going to be lights everywhere. There's going to be plenty of space for you and your family to be socially distanced and safe. And don't forget, when you're down here enjoying the lights, be sure to mask up and be safe. Merry and Bright, a history of the Night of Lights, presented by PNC Bank, continues. And welcome back. With the lights now lit in downtown Fort Wayne, let's take a look at how some families are keeping up with tradition. I really like the light because, because there's Santa. Every year we come and pick up Santa. It's just our favorite thing to do. It's the family tradition. It's not the Christmas season without it. We definitely appreciate it more this year. It's such a big, uh, display of lights and there's not really anything else like it. We pretty much take pictures so we can um, commemorate each mm -hmm. visit as the kids grow up. We've been coming since they were babies and uh, of course we have to tell Santa what we want for Christmas. I mean <laughs> he's right there why don't we just <laughs> tell him. Yes. And we came last year and they were so excited to see the lights we couldn't wait to bring them back this year. My favorite part is coming to see Santa because I love Santa and he brings all the kids joy. I'm really excited because I like the lights and how they um, kind of flicker on and off. How are reindeers flying? How can reindeers fly? That's impossible. I think with magic. Normally we have between 10 and 20,000 people downtown to observe this lighting and that was just a little too many people for us to, uh, to accommodate this year as far as social distancing. So uh, we had to let the community know that we had not forgotten that uh, this is the season uh, to, uh, of optimism. It is the season that everyone, I think, believes at least a little bit in Santa Claus. So that optimism is there. We've been through a real tough time. This is going to take a little while, but again, we see light at the end of the tunnel. Just hang in there, uh, be patient, and stay safe. That is an important message from Mayor Henry. Enjoy the lights and your holiday time together, but please do it safely. Once again, the lights will be on throughout the holiday season until the new year. From all of us here at Wayne 15 and on behalf of the Downtown Improvement District and all of the Night of Lights participants, we wish you a merry and safe holiday season.